Okay, today we're going to play with one of my favorite robots and two of my okay repro sort of fun robots. In any case, way back in the 60s when I was a kid, I had this gear robot. It's the original one. And what's really nice about the gear robot, not just the gears, is that it has a speed control on top of its head. So you have your off, you have slow, and you have quick. And basically the difference between slow and click it, quick is in, in slow position it runs on one D cell battery and quick it runs on two of them. So one and a half volts versus three volts. When I was a kid it was really hard to find batteries anywhere. We didn't have any money. All the robots that I ever got as a kid came from my grandparents and my aunts and uncles. But um, so finding batteries around their house during any time of the year after Christmas Day was near impossible. So when I could find one, I could still run my gear robot. Then the second really cool feature about the robot was the three sequential lights. Not two, like in the repros, but three. Very cool. I had to know how they did it, so I, of course, opened my toy up over and over again many, many times. So I'm going to run this in a minute and we'll look at it. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the repros. Uh, Metal House released a few, I don't know how many years ago. I'm not going to state because I'll say the wrong number. But um, the problem with the repro, well, it's not a problem. For me, it's a problem because I had the original. I know how much better it is. Is they left out the two important features. One, there's no more speed control. It's just on or off. And two, they just put in two lights, alternately flashing. Basically, there's a wiper that when the leg linkage moves, it hits one wiper, then it hits the other. It's just so simplistic that it kind of pisses you off. <laughs> I mean, inside here, there's an actual wiper that turns around a commutator that has three sections. So as it comes, it turns each one on sequentially. Very cool. Much A lot more work, so we know why they didn't do it in the repros. Too bad they didn't put in a three-way switch even on the back of the robot to select one battery or two batteries, but they didn't. So, here's the original. Let's uh, start with a close-up so you can see on slow speed. That's one D-cell battery. You can see the lights aren't particularly bright, but everything's running. Everything locks. And you can still play with the robot and still have a good time. But on high speed, and we'll get it up here where you can see everything. And there's fast. Now you get the full three volts. Very nice. Uh, this robot, everything is original except for the knob. It's very uh, common when you find one of these old robots that the knob would have been twisted off by some kid. You give a kid a knob that he's supposed to turn, they're going to turn it. They're going to turn it till they twist them off. And uh, so in this particular one that I picked up, it didn't have the knob. But the rest of the robot was complete and in very good working condition. Okay, on the uh, repro ones, again, they, uh, they, they are, are still tin. You can see that they almost are the same size. I mean, the body, the legs, the feet, the arms look the same. It's mainly the head that's different. Now there are different rivet patterns and different artwork and the gear placement's different but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, two D cells in the back. They were made in Japan as was the original one and when you turn them on then they are good runners, they are good walkers, and you do have good moving gears. A very well built robot because it was one that was built in Japan. This is the silver version that they came out with, and over here is the gold one. It's going to work exactly the same. Now, if these things didn't command such a high price, and you see prices for these on eBay that exceed the price of the original gear robot. I don't know why, but a person could modify one of these fairly easy by drilling a hole and you could insert an LED for the center one, maybe a yellow one since you already have red and green. The original one has uh, blue, yellow, red, but uh, 
The way they have these made by moving the wipers so that when the legs are centered, none of the lights were on and they only turn on when one leg or the other is forward. In other words, uh, an off point where both lights go out. You could wire an LED to come on at that point just using the, uh, the current. See, these are actual light bulbs. These aren't LEDs. An LED is only going to need 10 milliamps or so to light up. These require anywhere from 60 to 120 milliamps, depending on which type of bulb is put in there. So if you ever wire a bulb and an LED in series with each other, you would find that the LED would always light up way before the bulb or in place of the bulb. You still have to have a current re limiting resistor on the LED. But by doing that, you can in fact get a three-way light flash, but it would be a kind of a waste to, unless you found a junker one of these, to modify a mint one because they have value. They are history. They do work well. They're just nowhere near as cool as the original. Look at this puppy. And then the Japan can faintly be seen stamped into the metal in the back. And as stated earlier, when I was a kid and I couldn't find two D cell batteries, and all I could come up with was one. I could still play with my toy. So nice. So nice. Good running after all these years. Look at that sequential lighting effect. So even though the knob's not right, here's the markings on the top of the head. So you can see the different positions. And of course they don't have the two batteries in, so we can't we can't get into that mode. <laughs>